Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. The transrectal ultrasound, or truss procedure, teaches the basics of ultrasound-guided techniques and provides a basis for more advanced prostate oncology diagnostic methods. Pursuant et al. states that because truss can cause discomfort to patients and requires skills in three-dimensional orientation and interpretation of findings, a realistic truss simulator, which does not burden patients, seems desirable to facilitate training. Currently, there is a lack of truss biopsy training methods that are accessible outside of using live patients while also providing important realistic feedback. We sought to design a portable, high-fidelity simulation model for resident education which can be used to further truss training techniques. The model was designed to fulfill four main objectives. The model needs to provide instantaneous feedback, including accurate tactile properties and core locations. It needs to work in a virtual environment, it needs to be portable and safe to use, mitigating any biohazard risks, and it must be compatible with ultrasound equipment. The DICOM files of a de-identified patient MRI scan with a 120 gram prostate was imported into materialized software. Here, all the relevant anatomy for the procedure was segmented to create a CAD file that included the six biopsy zones of the prostate, prostatic urethra, posterior fascial layers, vas deferens, hollow seminal vesicles, and the rectum. Next, the CAD was utilized to create negative molds which were then 3D printed. The zones were individually molded using ultrasound enhancing hydrogel, then assembled sequentially into a final prostate mold. The prostate was then surrounded by its accompanying structures and placed into the final mold with the rectum and posterior fascial layers. In order to further develop the model, six expert urologists specializing in truss biopsies were recruited to pilot the initial versions of the model. The model was set up in a standard outpatient procedure room equipped with an ultrasound and all appropriate instrumentation. Participants were first asked to measure the prostate volume. Then, participants administered the local anesthetic. Correct placement was confirmed by the separation of the posterior fascial layer. Finally, participants were asked to obtain two biopsy cores from each zone for a total of 12 cores. Accuracy was determined by the color of the core. If participants failed to obtain more than 50% of the core from the corresponding zone, additional biopsies were performed. Various metrics were utilized to assess the efficacy of the model, including the number of biopsy attempts, the accuracy of biopsy cores as a percentage of the core in the correct color, the time taken to obtain each core, perceived task difficulty on a scale of 1 through 10, and additional feedback through guided free response and 5-point Likert scale questions. During the pilot testing, experts' responses were used to provide feedback for further improvement regarding the model's anatomical features procedural steps, and assessment metrics. Additionally, experts were asked to describe what they did and did not like about the model. Following expert feedback, changes to the model included a smaller urethral diameter following the curvature of the prostate, positioning the prostatic apex to lie closer to the rectal wall, and moving the hollow part of the seminal vesicles to the edge of the prostate base for better ultrasound visualization. Proceeding with the finalized model, six novice urologic residents were recruited to participate in the study alongside the six expert urologists. When asked how well the model replicates the relevant human anatomy for the procedure, with one representing strongly disagree and five representing strongly agree, experts and novices rated the model as a 3.75 and 4.5 out of 5 respectively. Additionally, both experts and novices rated the model above a 4 when asked if the simulated tissue accurately resembles the appearance of live human tissue. When asked to rate the ability of the simulation to mimic key portions of the procedure, experts and novices rated the model highly at or above a 4 out of 5 for most of the procedural steps. 
Experts and novices both agree that the model is useful for improving technical skills, teaching the procedure, and assessing the user's ability to perform the procedure. When comparing procedural metrics, significant differences were found between the experts and novices, with novices requiring significantly more biopsy attempts to obtain a successful core, reporting higher perceived difficulty, and requiring more time per biopsy zone and time per biopsy attempt. Moving forward, we plan to utilize this model in a virtual learning curriculum for resident education. The curriculum will consist of four stages that include an e-learning phase where participants can review a variety of material about the procedure, a mental rehearsal phase where participants will write down and plan their approaches, a remote hands-on simulation phase where participants will undergo a guided simulation, and a deliberate practice phase where participants will complete the simulation on their own. The portable and non-biohazardous nature of the model makes it ideal for use with merged reality softwares. This software allows the instructor to teach remotely, superimposing their hand movements on the trainee's view to aid in procedural training. The angle down this way. Yep, move it a little bit more. Perfect. And then slowly you start to insert the ultrasound while looking at the screen. So show us the screen. All right, very good. So you start to slowly go towards the base and slowly twisting, you're gonna start. So that's the seminal vesicle. Did you see that right there? That's the seminal vesicle right there. That's the base of the prostate. Very good. Look a little bit higher up. Yep, so that is the, 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 the transverse view and that's the ultrasound and you're moving towards the apex. So give me a good ultrasound, go towards the mid of the prostate. Very good. And then twist with the ultrasound. So show me the ultrasound again. In order to get the better planes, what I want you to do is twist the ultrasound to the left and to the right, clockwise and anti-clockwise. That way you're actually able to see the left and the right of the prostate. Additionally, the software allows the instructor to annotate the trainee's view. In conclusion, we have shown the development of a high fidelity, portable, and non-biohazardous simulation model for truss biopsies. This model provides instantaneous feedback and procedural metrics while displaying high anatomical and procedural realism ratings among novices and experts. The model also provides educational value as a teaching and assessment tool for the trust procedure, which ultimately will be the basis for a virtual remote learning curriculum to improve urologic resident education.